Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having an incredible day to start things off. Binance Exchange will feature three new coins within the fifth phase of its crypto lending product available for subscription starting from the 20th of September after initially launching its Binance lending service on the 28th of August. Binance will now allow users to lend assets and earn interest with three major altcoins, including privacy-focused coins, Monero, Zcash, and Dash. Here's a little chart right here. Uh, the term to mature, should be maturation, maturity, anyway, is uh, 14 days. Uh, and the annualized interest rate on these three coins each will be 3.5%. Similarly to the initial phase, Lending products of the fifth phase on the platform will have a 14-day fixed term lending period after subscription from the 20th of September to the 21st of September. According to the announcement, all cryptocurrencies will have the same annualized interest rate of 3.5%. Uh, they talk about the other coins that they have, Bitcoin, Ether, Ether Classic, uh, and Tether, and the other interest rates for them. Uh, the most interesting part is, and I'm pretty sure some people maybe had their ears perk up as I was saying the names of these coins. Uh, very recently, we've had the Financial Action Task Force, the FATF, announce to the world uh, their cryptocurrency standards that many other countries around the world are supposed to um, adhere to and also um, live up to as well. I think as of right now, we have about 20 countries who come forward who have said, yeah, we're going to follow uh, exactly what you're saying. The main things that have been shot down the last th anywhere from three months to a year um, have been privacy coins. Any coin that allow you to have private transactions have been shunned by world governments. And for some reason, Binance has added these three coins uh, to their platform. There's even a an article right here says Binance teases the FATF allowing lending via privacy coins. Um, I assume there is a motive behind this. I, you know, money is probably a, 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 a big thing of it. Uh, but for them to focus exclusively on these coins when I'm pretty sure they know uh, that these are the coins that are being hunted down by countries around the world is to me a bit fascinating. I... I can't really figure out a reason for them doing this, especially like it's it's clear that they're they targeted these three coins uh, specifically, as I believe they are the three most popular uh, private transaction coins that we have on the market. Um, but uh, the the takeaway is if you have these coins and you've been looking to earn extra money from holding these coins, well, Binance then might be the place for you. That wasn't a uh, an advertisement for them. It was simply a a fact because it's on the screen. Anyway, um, yeah, I assume we'll see how this develops uh, very recently because the things that we've been seeing, especially, I think it even says it somewhere down here. Nope, where is it? Maybe on this one. Give me half a second. Wait for it. Wait for it. Yep, there we go. Um, we also had OKEX, uh, which is another major cryptocurrency exchange, uh, declare that they were actually delisting these exact same coins from their uh, cryptocurrency website about a good couple of days ago. Uh, so, it's a little odd, um, however, I assume, um, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of all over the place. Anyway, let's move on. Next up, major cryptocurrency payment service provider known as BitPay has added support for the second largest cryptocurrency by market cap, and that is Ether. Per a press release published on the 16th of September, companies that use BitPay for payment processing are now able to accept Ether for purchases without having to set up any enhancement. BitPay has also made it possible for users to store and use Ether in a BitPay wallet and for BitPay prepaid Visa card holders to top up their debit cards as well. Launched in 2011, BitPay processes payments with Bitcoin, Bcash, and now Ether. The system converts all currencies to digital money and vice versa. BitPay has purportedly processed nearly $3 billion in payments since 2011. Commenting on the development, Vitalik Buterin said, it's exciting to see BitPay leading the way in integrating Ethereum into global payment systems. This truly opens up a new world of possibilities for the Ethereum ecosystem. And together we can continue to be a lending innovator for real world use cases for cryptocurrencies. Cool. Um, this 
I'm going to try and stay as as middle as possible. Uh, people believe, remember about a good three and a half, four days ago, when the price of Ether was going up and nothing else was going up, people believe that this was the reason for Ethereum's price rise, i.e. Um, BitPay, which has been around since 2011, um, announcing that they were going to be adding Ether as a payment option without having to upgrade any systems or whatever, um, that that caused Ethereum to go from, what was it, one, 180 to around 220 where it is right now. I personally don't think this was the case. I still assume it has to do with the upgrades and the news that we've been getting that the upgrades for Ethereum are definitely going to come sometime in October. Um, Simply because, if you want my opinion, um, eh, uh, as they might have been around since 2011, that's still eight years, and they've processed just around three billion. There are, um, for 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 context, uh, the CBOE's Bitcoin futures contracts trade around half a billion per day. Eh, so. I find it quite hard to believe that a payment processor that does three billion over the course of an eight year period would have any uh, dramatic effect on the price of Ether more than the actual upgrades that we've been promised or told that we were going to get since 2016. Like I said, I try to stay as, you know, as centered as possible in this discussion. However, uh, that is the um, BitPay adding Ether. Why did Ether's price go up news? Let's move on. Next up, Singapore-based crypto and blockchain company known as Huobi Group has rolled out an exchange in Argentina planning to add support for a fiat to cryptocurrency gateway. Per a press release shared with Cointelegraph on the 17th of September, Huobi launched Huobi Argentina, logically, using Huobi Cloud, okay, a service that allows users to build over-the-counter and digital asset exchanges on top of Huobi's existing platform. For now... Huobi Argentina's users can purchase digital currencies with Argentinian pesos using Huobi's over-the-counter service, but the exchange is planning to set up a fiat gateway to trade Argentinian pesos for crypto in October of this year. This will purportedly enable users to buy crypto using credit cards, transfer, and some local digital payment providers. Carlos Banfi, CEO at Huobi Argentina, said the move could contribute to attracting global investment, adding, and I do quote, Argentina is South America's most promising market for blockchain development. There already exists a general consensus to break from a reliance on the local currency and banks. And with Huobi's entrance into the market, it is a great opportunity to move the needle on blockchain and crypto adoption in Argentina, end quote. Uh, while this may not be one of the most exciting news stories that we've gotten in a while, um, it is widely believed and has been for quite a long amount of time within the cryptocurrency space, especially amongst... Um, Early adopters, especially if you look at the actual reason why Bitcoin and um, other cryptocurrencies in the very beginning were created, it was that it would provide um, economic inclusion, not only economic sovereignty, but economic inclusion for the rest of the world. Uh, for those of you who do not know, um, historically, uh, banking options have usually only been provided to uh, the very rich, people who have a lot of money or are, banks are usually in neighborhoods or countries where people think that people then have a chance of potentially getting more money that they could then store with the bank. The banks don't actually care about people. Uh, so the idea was for a while that cryptocurrencies would be able to flourish within South America, within Africa, within parts of Southern Asia, um, areas that are not as economically strong. Uh, so the fact that we have seen a huge amount of attention being paid to South America and also in certain instances uh, being also paid to Africa as well is quite nice. I like to hear news stories like this. I like to hear that there are people uh, within Brazil, Argentina, Venezuela, Colombia, all these countries that we hear about maybe once every three or four weeks who are getting new cryptocurrency exchanges, even if they're just over the counter markets that these people still have access to cryptocurrencies that they understand what cryptocurrencies are. And especially like this person even said uh, that people realize that there are alternatives to uh, fiat or paper currencies that are probably inflating heavily and that there is a way for people to make money outside of um, just the stuff that their government has told them is okay. If that kind of makes any sense. Anyway, 
I thought this was kind of cool. And yeah, let's move on. In what might actually be my favorite news story of the week, Facebook reportedly met British authorities and regulators three times prior to publicly announcing plans for Libra. As Reuters reported, on the 18th of September, financial, nope, that's wrong, Facebook had several appointments with officials at Britain's finance ministry, the Financial Conduct Authority, and the Bank of England this spring. Reuters received re details regarding the meeting after submitting freedom of information requests. At the meeting, the tech giant discussed its forthcoming digital currency in a bid to get support before the official announcement. Libra has been actively trying to get approval from regulators around the world and has pledged not to launch until regulators are appeased. A Facebook spokesperson told Reuters they said, and I do quote, engaging with regulators, policymakers, and experts is critical to Libra's success. This was the whole reason that Facebook, along with other members of the Libra Association, shared our plans early in quote. Bank of England Governor Mark Carney previously argued that Libra, due to the massive scale of the project, has to be virtually perfect at the onset in order for it to be released at all. He said, it's either successful or it isn't. If it's successful, it becomes systemic because it would involve a very large number of users. And if you're a systemic payment system, it's five sigma end quote. Why you may be asking why I love this information is because I said a few times that it's quite interesting that we do not hear regulators anymore talking about how much they hate Libra. The, the word as it is right now is that um, Libra simply must be regulated. Libra has to know what they're doing from the beginning. It has to be perfect from the onset. It has to be this, it has to be that, and therefore it is going to be able to launch. The fact that we now have information that, was it three months? Where is it? Oh, no, they met, sorry, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. That they met three times before, apologies, uh, with British lawmakers and financial officials about launching this, tells me that they've probably done this multiple times across other countries as well. And I am going to now further assume further that there were probably multiple meetings with tons of U.S. officials. And this is why, in my opinion, uh, when we heard certain U.S. officials talking negatively about Facebook and Libra, it was only about three or four people. And I was like, that's kind of weird because you would normally, if it's that much of a threat, you would normally hear about 15, 16, 25, 35, 89 other people um, all clamoring that this must be, you know, this must end, this must so-and-so-and-so. And so. However, it was around three to four people, and they're also silent, uh, which leads me to believe that many other people in these other countries were probably having discussions with Facebook, and the people from Calibra uh, were already okay with it, knew that the announcement was going to come, and potentially, um, allegedly, not even allegedly, I, I, I would personally assume that they probably already have a stake in either Facebook or in Calibra in some, because I think Libra also announced that they're launching two coins. So it's the actual uh, Libra stable coin. And it's also, I think, a security token that they said they, they, they already know is a security. Why? Because I'm going to assume that the second coin allows people to have a stake in Libra. And how would they already know that this coin is a security unless they were told by other government and financial leaders around the world this second coin is going to be a security that people can then buy. Uh, I also wouldn't be surprised if that coin actually ends up going uh, to the stock market, not Libra, but the second Libra security token, um, and that normal people are then able or allowed to buy stake within Calibra. Sorry, anyway, I found this fascinating because it's been given to us in the news as if this was simply just sprung on lawmakers that the people from Libra or Facebook had been working on this for a good two, three years, and that at some point they were like, okay, let's announce this. But now we have news. They've been, they've been talking, of course they have, of course they have, of course they have, of course they have. And this is why we haven't seen as much of a backlash as many other. When you hear about this on podcasts, when you hear about this on the news, um, people are always like, yeah, we're expecting lawmakers to completely shut this down. And I was like, no, there's, there, there's, there's far too much money. For, for those of you who remember, remember... About, no, a year ago. Has it been that long already? When, 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 uh, when Zuckerberg was told to like sit before Congress and stuff like that, and why are you doing this? H how does Facebook work? How, how does all of, you know all these like very 
long discussions that they were having with him when they couldn't figure out the internet. And everyone was like, oh man, Facebook's going down. Better delete your Facebook. Facebook's not going to last. And, and we still have Facebook and none of these countries or governments uh, ever uh, talk about not sanctioning Facebook, but, you know, punishing them. Anyway, um, it's all money. As long as you have enough money and can throw your weight around. And this is why I think a lot of people can't even think about uh, saying no to Facebook because they are basically their own country at this point. Like I was having a discussion with someone about Facebook, Amazon and Google. I think people don't really understand the the growth and largeness of these companies. They are larger than multiple countries around the world. And when Facebook does launch their coin, they're going to be the largest bank in the world. So uh, you can't really you can you can try to oppose as much as you want. Uh, it's just not really going to work. And that's not me also rooting for Facebook. It's more like a um, we keep getting news as if like. There's some type of a like fight the power thing that's happening behind the scenes, but it's all money. Like they, the government and world leaders don't really care uh, simply because they are going to be compensated economically. It's the nicest way I can kind of say it. Here's the actual article right here from Reuters. It says Facebook met UK officials three times before Libra announcement. I have to sneeze and I'm trying to like hold it in. Uh, so the next part of the video is going to be a bit weird. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. The, uh, the tinfoil hat in me would like to speculate heavily. However, I'll let you come up with your own ideas as to exactly what's going on. Come on, don't sneeze. U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission Chairman Jay Clayton has said that investors should be wary of Bitcoin. Speaking on Thursday at the Delivering Alpha conference presented by CNBC, and institutional investor, investors, the SEC chairman says that the world's most popular cryptocurrency will need to be better regulated before it's traded on a major exchange. He said, and I do quote, if investors think there's the same rigor around the price discovery as there is on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange, they are sorely mistaken, end quote. With a market cap of $180 billion, according to crypto trader coin market cap, Tracker, whatever. Anyway, Bitcoin has seen a number of wild swings during the course of the year. And then they, the other important part, blah, 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 so and so and so. Where's the other important part? Uh, he pretty much said uh, we have to get to a, uh, uh, we have to get to a place where we can be confident that trading is better regulated, end quote. The entire discussion that he was having is that um, Bitcoin is simply not ready uh, to be embraced by the traditional financial markets. While we may have different websites and places where we can see the prices or even trade cryptocurrency, it is, it, it is not regulated enough that the United States or many other countries would be confident or um, comfortable enough to be able to list or launch or allow um, Bitcoin ETFs or other any type of exchange traded something that is dealing with Bitcoin. Uh, the timing of it is very weird, and I'll explain to you exactly why. Um, firstly, it's very the the things that he said or has stated are very 2016, 2017. I'm not exactly sure why uh, he said something like this. Rather, you'll I mean you'll see exactly why I think he said it. Um, but to say that Bitcoin is or that investors in Bitcoin should be wary. It's something that we heard a very long time ago. We've gotten past a lot of these discussions. Um, and the idea that this also ties, like this is directly after uh, the people from, oh gosh, what was it? Uh, Van Eck, Solid X, uh, retracted their Bitcoin ETF proposal. He said this almost immediately after, which led me to believe that probably they were told by the SEC that their Bitcoin ETF or whatever was not going to be approved. Uh, stay with me. I think it's in this article. Where is it? Where is it? Ba -ba 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 -ba. So and so and so. Nope, it has to be in the next one. Mm, to see. Nope. Okay. What this ties directly into is that BACT is launching on Monday. The SEC has announced before that the New York Stock Exchange getting into the cryptocurrency markets was going to be one of the safest and best things, air quotes, for cryptocurrency investors as it is through a trusted regulated exchange that the government knows about so and so go on and so forth um the fact that he said this and the next news story also ties directly into it and that the new york stock exchange is launching their um 
cryptocurrency uh, price discovery place because this is also going to be a place where people can regulatedly, why did I make air quotes, uh, be able to find out the price of Bitcoin is also very odd. So once again, keep all that in your mind and then pay attention to this one. There's a company called Bitwise who um, last year uh, decided to give the SEC a report that Bitcoin was not only garbage, uh, but Bitcoin was manipulated. Bitcoin had so many problems. Bitcoin has this, Bitcoin has that. Bitcoin should not be allowed for normal everyday traders. What have you. Crypto pioneer Bitwise says three key changes over the past two years have materially improved the Bitcoin market posted in a 31 page slide deck from the cryptocurrency index and fund provider. The data argues that there is now a sound foundation for a fully regulated Bitcoin ETF in the United States. Wow, that's so weird. Kind of odd that, you know, the SEC chairman would say that the market's simply not ready. Bitcoin is not so-and-so-and-so. Uh, but a company that works with the SEC for some reason has then, the day after, uh, released 31 pages arguing that Bitcoin is now ready for an ETF within the United States. That's really odd. They said, the Bitcoin spot market has become efficient. Bitcoin custody has become fully institutional. Sure. Uh, the regulated futures market has become significant. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, or the SEC, published the full deck from Bitwise on their website, which currently has an application pending for its Bitcoin ETF trust. Hmm. If approved, it would trade on the New York Stock Exchange and would become the country's first fully regulated Bitcoin exchange terated fund. According to Bitwise, its earlier report detailing fake volumes at cryptocurrency exchanges held to shake up the industry and produce positive change. They said what happened following the publication of our research showing that 95% of all reported Bitcoin trading volume is fake. The report received extensive, ex extensive, extensive media coverage. Uh, they talk about everyone who, who spoke about them and, and how great and, and wonderful they are for having uh, brought the, the, the alleged fake volumes to light. The report left to, led to swift responses from exchanges such as Binance and crypto data providers such as CoinMarketCap, along with the launch of an initiative called Data Accountability and Transparency Alliance, or DATA, to improve its metrics. Additionally, nine exchanges reported a drop in volume exceeding 90%. So... For those of you who were here last year when we actually went over this, and I even went over, the, went, went, went over the numbers, I make too many videos to even begin to tell you exactly which video I was talking about this in. The report that we had from Bitwise about the fake volumes, which I even, I, I remember it was one of those days where I was like, I'm not going to even talk about this. There's no point to even go into a discussion about this. The report that they had pretty much centered on cryptocurrency exchanges that you've never even heard of. It was that many of these other exchanges who may have 10, 15, 20 million dollars worth of, you know, daily volume around the world, they were faking their volumes back and forth. But this had no actual effect on the normal cryptocurrency or Bitcoin price market. Uh, according to what I read and what I said in that video, what it actually was is that 5% of all exchanges out there have 95% of their volume fake. Right. That's what it said, at least according to what I remember reading in that report. Um, immediately after that, I remember as well, the CFTC and the SEC, I think they also rejected another Bitcoin ETF and they were talking about, no, this can't work. No, that doesn't make any sense. No, Bitcoin's simply not ready. And that's when, for those of you who remember, we had that huge amount of energy in the market where everyone was coming forward talking about, we're launching this. We're launching this. Fidelity is launching this. New York Stock Exchange is launching this. NASDAQ is launching this. We're launching this. The German Stock Exchange is launching this. And I was like, why is everyone getting so quickly into the cryptocurrency space? And I also, oh my gosh, it don't make sense. Remember, I was like, I said, it's very, I said, I'm certain that we're going to enter a period within the cryptocurrency space where the old places where we get our prices from, our metrics or whatever, so and so, that these are all going to disappear. It, okay, it all makes sense now. The fact that there was something, a report like this, talking about other cryptocurrency exchanges who could have potentially become more popular in the future having fake trading volumes, them being uh, subpoenaed by the SEC, being torn down, being so-and-so, and so had to close down, close up shot, whatever, the so-and-so, and so. The fact that they're all gone, and then immediately after this, we had information from the major financial everything in this world, 
everything and all the stock exchanges, the major stock exchanges in the world that they were also getting into Bitcoin. I was like, it doesn't make any sense that they had to wash out the competition to make sure that they had a place for themselves. And the fact that yesterday the SEC chairman announced that Bitcoin simply wasn't ready, that there needed to be more information, so and so and so, blah, 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 and investors be wary. And the very next day, Bitwise, the same exact people who were talking about fake trading volumes that got all the other cryptocurrency exchanges washed out, then released a report talking about, no, Bitcoin's now ready for an ETF is weird. Is it just me? It's not just me. I know it's not just me. I'm, I'm, there, there's someone else listening right now who's shaking their head. I know it's not just me. That It, it all ties in too perfectly and this is why i think we also saw many other cryptocurrency exchanges in south korea and in japan uh really like get whipped into shape like they were really for, last year we had a situation where for some reason uh many other countries around the world who had been very crypto friendly they, they didn't become unfriendly but it was more like a uh yeah we need to get this in shape like everything has to be completely perfect uh it all makes sense now um even more so where is it bop 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 uh, nope, where is it? Here we go. On the 14th of October, that's about a good three weeks away, three and a half weeks away, the SEC is expected to approve or reject the Bitwise ETF proposal filed with the New York Stock Exchange, ARCA. New York Stock Exchange, for those who don't know, are the same exact people who are making Bact, which is also launching on uh, Monday kind of weird right especially even more so if you want to put it really into a very odd context um that the sec also has listed nope that's not it that the sec has also i i thought i had the tab open the point being the sec has also listed this information from bitwise on their actual platform they published it why would the sec be working with bitwise the company who created the situation that made other cryptocurrency exchanges close up shop caused other, I'm, they, they didn't probably cause, but allowed other mega names in finance to announce that they were getting into the cryptocurrency space. They published their information on their website and within the next three weeks, Bitwise is expected to be rejected or approved for a Bitcoin ETF on the New York Stock Exchange. Weird, right? Um, anyway, like I said, I was gonna try and keep my tinfoil hat in the corner. It didn't work. Uh, you all exactly, it's, it's, everything is always too obvious. I don't know if, it, if it's simply, um, the cookie crumbs are just like very like laid out directly in front of us, or if no, it's, it's every single time that we get information about something, especially like a year later, it, it'll all make so much sense. And it always, usually always, none of this has to do, in my opinion, none of this has to do with regulation. None of this has to do with protecting investors or consumers. It just has to do with pushing the, the small people out to make sure uh, that you make all the money. Remember last year when we had all those articles about um, uh, larger investors shaking the tree or like getting out all the, all the weak hands from the market? They did it. They made sure they found the way to push down the prices so much that other people who could have been or stayed in the cryptocurrency space left because they were discouraged. And now when, 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 Bitcoin's price goes over 20,000 and starts skyrocketing. These same exact people are going to try and get back in, realizing that they had earlier positions that they no longer held. And the, the, mm, the market is then ripe uh, for the rich to once again uh, claim everything that they already had before. Like I, I, like I, like I keep saying, the market has a, a essentially become something uh, where the rich who were already richer are going to become richer -er. It's It's very, very odd. It's very obvious now. Anyway, uh, those are the pieces of the puzzle that I have fit together. Um, tell me if you have another idea. Uh, it's, it, it, seems, it seems a bit too obvious that all this stuff is kind of lining up. Um, also, I guess to kind of uh, actually finish off the video now, um, for some reason, we've been having uh, discussions uh, the last couple of weeks about securities once again. I'm not exactly sure why, and I'm not, I'm not going to even get into what a security is or the entire discussion. Um, a lot of people, a lot of websites as well, have been talking about um, that certain coins once again are securities. I don't know if people are just bored. I don't know if these people who are writing these articles, not this one, not 
to even uh, point out this one. It's more so like a, uh, in general, when I'm looking for news, relevant news in the cryptocurrency space, a lot of people are, and I'm not going to mention any coins, you know exactly which coins I'm talking about. People are having discussions once again about uh, this may be a security, that's probably a security. While this guy was talking on stage, that's definitely a security. And I don't know where the news is coming from. I'm not really sure. Like I said, maybe these people are bored. Uh, maybe they are stuck in 2017, and this is the uh, this is as far as they can get in their... Um, anyway, so uh, to kind of bring the point on home very quick, um, if any coin, and I will state this probably for the last time unless we get explicit information from the SEC, the SEC within the United States over the last four to five weeks has been on a witch hunt, I will say. If something is a security or if they have done wrong in the eyes of the SEC, the SEC goes after them publicly, rapidly, very quick, without any confusion. Um, so I'm going to read off the headlines and simply put it to you this way. If something, anything within the top 20 cryptocurrency coins were indeed a security, they would have been torn apart already by the SEC. It says... The SEC finds simply vital for an unregistered ICO. The US SEC goes after Veritasium for abused ICO funds. The SEC charges token sale platform ICO box with securities violations. And the SEC settles with ICO rating over anti-touting breach. If anything in the cryptocurrency space is a security or is believed to be a security by the SEC, uh, the SEC has already gone for them or um, has made public. The fact that we get um, public, almost weekly news of um, coins that no one is probably holding, that's just my opinion, um, being um, punished, whatever it, uh, by the SEC, it's fairly evident once again that a number of coins within the top 20 probably are not securities. And if they were, I'm going to put it to you this way once again. If you are a multi-hundred million dollar market cap coin or a multi-billion dollar market cap coin, uh, you probably would have been targeted way before other coins um, like Veritasium or ICO Box uh, that probably, probably had maybe five million dollar market cap. Like, I, I don't know where these discussions are coming from. I've, I've been seeing a lot of them. I've been seeing a lot of articles uh, making sure to notice or note uh, these three coins are probably security. Stay away from them. And I'm like, I'll bite. And I, and, I, and I click on it. And I'm like, you just listed three coins in the top 10 that you probably don't hold or don't like. Uh, so uh, just to clear up any confusion, um, as you're looking around, um, it makes more sense to pay attention to the actions of the SEC as opposed, uh, as opposed to an article from someone uh, who probably just doesn't like certain cryptocurrencies. I, like, like the last two weeks have been very weird. I've been seeing a lot of these articles. And once again, until we get explicit information from the SEC as to if any of the top 10 and or 20 coins are securities, um, just assume this isn't financial advice. Uh, just assume that they probably are not because the SEC has been... Um, quite apparent in their approach as to who they are uh, making sure to uh, sue and or fine. Just a gun to put it that way. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. They are Professor Wally from Gunbot University, Adam Graysick, Moham Maroney, Master Ventures in Thailand, Brady Niels, Woody and Daisy, Triple M and J, Jared Schneider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Crypto Joe, Bankroll Network, Adobo, Mill Wheezy, JR, Mechanic, Strange Radio Central, Crypto Artist, Cole D, 3D, Cryptopolis, Nicholas, Run Earth, One Piece, One Love, Damien, Setsuna, Nick, Kanaya, Richie Rich, The Third, Vlad the Impaler, Crypto and Beer Shipmate, Paxis, wow, why'd I say it so low, Paxis, Nick Mangialavori, Anthony Charles, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller Hitch Chest Every Day, and Kyle Skips Leg Day, and yes to Crypto. Thank you all very, very much for your support. At the moment, for those of you who may not be looking at the screen, uh, a lot of the markets in green. Oddly enough, uh, Bitcoin yesterday slipped down to 9,650. 
Somewhere around that number, it is currently at $10,191. It has moved on up around 3%. Ether is also up. Uh, once again, my opinion, I don't personally believe that it is up because of BitPay. Uh, we've had information before about other payment processors who have added Ethereum, have added this coin, have added other smaller coins, and their prices haven't jumped. We also had information before that the people from Spedin, from Flexa, from all these other things were adding Ether as a payment option as well, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and Ether's price did not go up. Just my opinion. I have a feeling that it's because we're gearing up for all the, or rather, uh, part one of the three upgrades that we're going to have over the next four months. This makes a bit more sense. Uh, no other coin is, I mean, Lumens is down by 8.5%. I think it has to do with the fact that Lumens went up by 40%. On no real news, so I think it's just a uh, calming down at the moment. All the other, all the other coins are anywhere between one to five percent up right now, give or take a couple of anomalies. And I assume this has to do with the fact that Bitcoin is going back up. Zero X is also by thirteen uh, percent. Keeping in mind, it has a thirty-six million dollar volume that can be done by any number of millionaires coordinating something. Now to say that it is. Just to note that it is possible. Um, I hope you all enjoyed. I hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. Um, make sure to have a, a good day. Have a good weekend. Go out and enjoy yourself. Go hang out with some friends. Go order some pizza. Call over a bunch of friends. Watch weird movies on Netflix. Just go have some fun. Thank you all once again for watching and listening, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.